Hi, it's Bob Oopscher, and this is the Gaining Perspective Podcast, where we bring you insightful conversations with some of the top thought leaders in the investment advisor profession and investment management industry. I am the founder and CEO of Advisor Perspectives. Case is a truly open marketplace for alternative investments where financial advisors and asset managers can engage and transact directly on a massive scale. Advisors don't have the same access to alternative investments as do large institutions, and without that access, advisors have fewer tools to capitalize on opportunities or withstand market downturns. This unlevel playing field puts advisors at a meaningful disadvantage when building and protecting wealth. Case is aiming to change that. Abby Salome serves as Case's Chief Marketing Officer and Managing Director, Case IQ, where she leads the firm's brand and media strategy, corporate communications, channel marketing, conferences, events, and the Case IQ business, business unit. Abby has over 20 years of experience in the independent wealth ecosystem. So, Abby, prior to Case, I know you were at Hightower. What drew you to Case and the fintech category in general? Yeah, well, thank you. First of all, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Um, so, having spent the majority of my life um, at a firm where I supported independent advisors, whether that meant helping them move from a captive channel to an independent channel or delivering top and bottom line solutions to help them build their businesses and grow their businesses, I often saw the struggles that they faced with investing in alternative investments. So having that point of view, and after I left Hightower and took a little hiatus, um, I had an opportunity to really sit back and think through where I thought I could add tremendous value and what some of the firms in the industry were doing to find ways to make the lives easier for financial advisors with the end goal, of course, always to help the investor, the retail investor, those that the advisors um, serve. And Case fell on my radar screen um, when I was doing my due diligence. And um, it was just a, a moment in time where kind of the two worlds collided and they had a need for somebody with my level of experience. And I had an interest in delivering this type of fintech platform for financial advisors. So it just worked out really well. Well, tell me about Case. Uh, explain its business model and really what problem does it solve for advisors? So the business model, as you suggested, we are a two-sided marketplace. So on one side of the marketplace, we have um, leading alternative asset managers and their funds. And on the other side of the marketplace, we have independent advisors. So we, we are maniacally focused on just the independent wealth community, which means either RIAs or independent broker dealers that serve IARs. And, um, and through our platform, we bring together the two sides of our marketplace so that they can gain access to products and funds that were once really reserved for just the institutional investors. Um, so we're making their lives easier by bringing them access, but then also really the ease of use of using the platform itself through digitizing the process. So if you've ever invested in an alternative investment yourself, you would know that your advisor probably gave you a 30-page subscription document to, to wet signature over the course of the years. So removing that barrier by digitizing the entire process and then connecting the pipes on the back end so that the data flows through to all the custodians and performance reporters so that the client sees a holistic view of all of their holdings Whereas in the past, that was not necessarily the case. Alternatives were not brought into the performance reporting for the clients. So those are a few ways that we're just driving efficiencies between ease of access and execution through the case platform. And I have many guests who talk about alternative investments, and I always 
want to be careful. What do you include in the category of alternatives? So it's everything from hedge funds to private equity, private credit, structured products platform that many are unaware that we actually serve. What else am I missing here? Real estate. Um, we do have some digital assets on the platform. So those are really the categories that we that we cover on the platform. All those different asset classes. And then, of course, there are different structures of products that we have as well. So looking across those investment vehicles, why are alternatives so important in today's market? Whenever there's volatile markets, um, there's always you know, a need to have investments that can help their clients, advisors, clients with either hedging the volatility or preserving capital or generating income. So, you know, we think that the alternative investments are an important part of a portfolio allocation. And to be able to deliver that to financial advisors to be able to use for their clients, especially during times of volatility, is really important. And I think advisors have been um, slow to adopt them, not only because they haven't had access, but also largely because they don't understand them completely. So if we can help them understand and gain confidence in using alternative investments, that also gives them um, additional confidence to leverage them for their clients' portfolios. We are recording today on October 3rd, and I did look at the market. Today's a very good day. We're Market's up about 3%. The Dow is up over 850 points. Why did you select independent advisors as your target audience? Well, I think if you look at the market and who was being most underserved, it was really the independent advisor ecosystem. So the wirehouse advisors have often had um, proprietary products or or created products for them to have access to some of the, these types of vehicles, whereas the independent advisors just didn't have that same access point. So focusing on the independent advisor, we can also really focus in on what their greatest needs are as it relates to um, being able to diligence the products on the platform, incorporate them into their clients' portfolios, transact them with ease of use, access the data so that they can properly report on it. And then most importantly right now is the education piece, providing them with a really tech-enabled, logical education platform so that they can learn more about these alternatives and be able to explain them to their clients. I'm going to come back to the education in a second, but you mentioned diligence and transacting and reporting. What are the greatest challenges that RAAs and independent wealth managers face when it comes to accessing alternative investments? Well, I think that some advisors, some independent advisors, some large independent advisors do have their own due diligence teams in-house. For example, I know at Hightower, we had, a, we had a due diligence team and we had a group of advisors that formed a committee that would meet on a fairly regular basis to discuss alternative investments. But the due diligence being done on alternative investments through Mercer, which is our partner in doing all of the due diligence for the funds on our platform, the level of depth that they go through on diligencing the funds goes beyond just your standard due diligence. They also go into the operating due diligence, which means how is this firm actually operating their own business? Um, and it's a pretty comprehensive uh, review that they go through. So while some firms may have their own internal diligence folks, they can feel a little bit more secure in knowing that Mercer is our due diligence partner. And if it doesn't passes the, pass the Mercer sniff test, it doesn't get on the case platform. So it's just one more level of confidence that they can gain from using the Mercer platform. What are the asset managers themselves doing to make it easier for private wealth managers to access their investment vehicles? Well, I think they're working with firms like Case to actually create product that is 
um, more appropriately distributed for the independent advisor. And I think in some cases they're creating new structures or wrappers around their products to make it a little bit more advisor centric. So for example, there's been a rise in funds called interval funds that return liquidity on a more frequent basis. So, you know, one of the biggest um, challenges of RIAs using alternative investments in a recent Cerulli report was that 54% of advisors thought that liquidity was a major consideration. So if you can remove that liquidity barrier from their concern, then you can open up the door to a lot more independent advisors um, using alternative investments. One other thing is that I think independent advisors have wrongly assumed that products are very expensive to use. And with firms like Case or other platforms that are doing similar things, we can reduce that barrier of entry on the expense side and bring down the cost of accessing alternative investments to an area that's much more tolerable and reasonable to be able to, to leverage for clients. When we talk about expenses, what are the typical fees? What does an advisor pay to be on the case platform? So advisors don't pay anything to come onto our platform. Um, our profitability comes from the asset managers. Let's come back to education. You mentioned it uh, earlier that it's important to bring advisors up to speed in the role that alternatives can play in their portfolios. How do you go about accomplishing that? So like you mentioned uh, early on, I also manage our Case IQ business. Case IQ is our tech-enabled education platform. So what we've done is we've written courses um, around all of the foundational level um, topics that advisors would need to learn about to invest in alternative investments. And that includes all the asset classes that they would need to know about. And then in addition, we create a course for every fund on our platform. So for advisors coming in for the first time or even coming to Case IQ for the first time, they have um, a series of foundational level courses where they can learn the basics about alternative investments. Those are all CE credit approved as well. And then for each product that we launch on the platform, there's another course that they can go through, which typically takes probably around 35 to 40 minutes. And it's, you know, all online. It's very logical. It's multimedia. So it has sound and it has video and it has little quizlets in between to, um, to drive retention. And it can give them a lot, a good grasp of the products and the solutions that they're looking to invest in for their clients. So given this broad range of content that you provide at a high level and a fund specific level, what types of content are advisors most engaging with on Case IQ? So right now, the courses that we're seeing most popular, and I think this is probably because of the market volatility, um, we've seen a lot of the foundation courses be very engaged with on our platform. So foundations of hedge funds, foundations of private credit, um, and right now the foundations of qualified opportunity zones or QOZs as we call them has been a pretty hot topic. I understand that you're hosting something called the Case Summit. It's the first time you've done this. Tell me about the Case Summit and what spurred you to host it. Yeah, so thanks for asking. We're really excited about it. The Case Summit is coming up in two weeks and the team is eagerly moving forward with final touches for it. Um, so our idea for the Case Summit was to bring together both sides of our marketplace, but in person. So they have the opportunity to connect through the platform and we wanted to extend that outside of the FinTech platform and have those personal introductions made. So we have about over 500 people coming to our Case Alternative Investment Summit. And um, we have courses around everything from every asset class to um, a variety of topics from some of the asset managers on the platform. Um, and then we've got 
amazing, impressive keynote speakers, including some of the largest in the independent wealth ecosystem, Marty Bicknell uh, from Mariner, Regini Kodalam from Focus Financial, Jeff Deco from Wealth Enhancement Group. We have even Michael Milken moderating a panel there um, alongside Jenny Johnson with the president of Franklin Templeton. So it's going to be a star-studded event. And um, in addition to the general sessions, what we've done is we've taken a a little bit of a unique approach, and we have 18 what we're calling case talks. These case talks are like 30-minute punchy topics on a variety of different um, subject matters that are happening simultaneously across and around the hotel. And that's things like digital assets and what you need to know, um, due diligence, for example, what really goes into due diligence, and a host of other topics that we think advisors in the audience are going to find real value in. And where are you hosting this? That's in Beverly Hills. So it's at the Beverly Hilton, October 17th through 19th. Well, we will make sure we include information in the notes that accompany this podcast for those who may be interested in attending. How is this going to differ from all the other conferences that we see advisors attending over the course of the year? That's a great question because this year alone, I think I've attended more conferences than I did in the last two years put together. And I think that's likely because of the pandemic. So um, we did really structure this in a very different way. Number one, it is the first alternative investment conference specifically designed for the independent advisor. So that's the first thing. A lot of the alternative investment conferences that are out there are largely geared for the institutional allocator, and ours is really dedicated for the independent advisor. So that's the first difference. And then the second difference is the way that we've structured the agenda to include these 18 case talks that are very different in nature. And then we also have roundtables going on and set up um, in the mornings so that people who want to talk about specific topics can join together and have those unfiltered conversations and that peer-to-peer experience that they oftentimes crave because they like to hear what their peers are doing and how their peers are investing. So I think those two things, coupled with the impressive lineup of keynote speakers um, and the fact that it's dedicated to the independent advisor ecosystem, are, is going to make this a, a very unique, differentiated conference. Anything special in addition that advisors can expect to hear about during the summit and, and also anything that you can share with us about how advisors can get involved going forward? Yeah. So I think that if you're an advisor and you're either just starting to think about how to incorporate alternatives into your portfolios for your clients or you're bringing in new assets and new business from new clients, um, this might be a sliver or an area that you're not very versed in, the Alternative Investment Summit is definitely one way for you to learn a lot about all of the different alternative investments, not just on the case platform, but just in general. In addition, you know, going to the Case IQ website and learning about alternative investments would give you a great, better understanding of um, the different types of asset classes that they are, what they're being used for, and how you can incorporate them into your portfolios. Um, If people have questions about any of those, they can feel free to come to our website, which is uh, casegroup.com, and learn a little bit more. If there's one key takeaway you would like to leave with our audience of advisors about how they should analyze and integrate alternative investments into their asset allocations, what would that be? So it's funny because we've done a couple of surveys out into the marketplace. And I would say that um, in the last one we did, which we conducted at the Morningstar conference, um, we asked you know over 200 independent advisors what they felt their biggest hurdle to investing was. And 69% of the participants of the survey cited that the lack of education around alternatives was the biggest barrier to using them. So I would just say, you know, education is free 
right? We're offering the education available to you. Um, you can come and go as you please and learn more about these alternative investments. Um, you know, right now the 6040 portfolio just may not be what your clients need for the long term. So learning more about how you can incorporate different asset classes to diversify against the volatility that we're seeing, the inflation, the rising interest rates. Um, it's just a way that we can help advisors better plan for their clients' financial futures. Well, we will include a link to the case website in the notes that accompany this podcast, as well as a link to learn more about the upcoming case summit. Abby, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you for having me on today. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to the Gaining Perspective podcast with Bob Hoopscher, today featuring Abby Salome of Case. To support our podcast, please share, subscribe, or leave a review to help make our podcast more findable for your friends and colleagues. You can subscribe to Gaining Perspective on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. 